Hey guys, welcome to the video. Thanks for joining today. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the decision I made to kind of up my camera game. Um, I have been recording with my GoPro Hero 9 for the entirety of this channel for two and a half years. Uh, and then uh, decided I just wanted something new. I thought a lot about different options. Uh, some of them would have probably given me some creativity uh, enhancements and others were just uh, ease of use considerations. Uh, the Hero 9 has been great. Uh, one of the problems you have with just recording for, for these uh, videos just with an action camera though is you really don't have a good zoom lens. They're, they're meant to be wide and catch angles but they definitely uh, have great stabilization and can do most of the things you want, but they're, they're just not that great at uh, like zooming in on things for close-up pictures during product reviews or things like that. But I decided I still wanted to stick in the action cam uh, world for now. Uh, some of the things I considered was like a 360 camera. You'll see that on several people's channels and they're kind of cool and that you're able to hold them steady and you get a picture all the way around you. Uh, they're very cool. I really considered those because they give you, uh, can get, definitely get some shots that I can't get otherwise and you're less likely to miss something. Uh, I ultimately ended up deciding not to go with the 360 camera like the Insta360 X3 or the GoPro Max, mostly because of a couple things. One was the, they have the two protruding lenses on either side of the camera and I run a lot uh, outside I run on trails, I trip and fall quite a bit, and I was very concerned that I would break the lens, and those are very expensive to replace or repair. Uh, another reason is it just, it does, from everything I've read, take a good bit more time to edit the 360 footage because you're having to decide which picture you want out of the 360 degree thing. So I just uh, didn't want to really add time to my workflow. So that's really the biggest reason why I decided not to go with the 360 camera at this time. I may still do it at some point in the future. The second more creative type of camera I really considered was like the Insta360 GO 3, that little bitty 35 gram camera that you can stick on your chest, you can stick on your, the bill of your cap. Uh, I actually thought that would be really cool for, for running shots and to be able to use that. It also is less conspicuous to carry around. You do give up a little quality in that its max resolution is 2.7K versus the GoPro gets 5.3. And my um, and the other camera I considered, the DJI Osmo Action 4, does 4K. But I thought for my running videos and for the YouTube channel, the 2.7K was actually going to be good enough. Uh, there were a couple things that finally ended up making me decide not to go that route. Uh, I know people do great with it. But the things that I didn't like were the uh, no removable storage. So you, you had to buy it in either 32 gig, 64 gig, or um, 256 gig to begin with. You were all, and you had to download it and erase it every so often to clear space. So I, for me, I like to be able to go on a week long trip and, and just switch out SD cards. I don't like the idea of having to download during the trip. Um, so that was one consideration. Also, the other thing was uh, there's a lot of their modes that you have to download and go. You always have to download the footage to your computer uh, since you're taking it off of, out of the internal memory and you're not able to just connect it up to, I use a editing software, DaVinci Resolve, and I, I didn't really want to take the time to have to edit the, download the software to my computer prior to using it in the editing software. Uh, and also some of their modes, you, you have to process it through the 360 app, the Insta360 app, which would also just add time to our workflow. So I just decided I wasn't gonna get enough benefit for, to, for the inconveniences it was gonna cause me personally. Uh, the other thing with the Insta360 GO 3 is it did not allow an external microphone and I've gotten to where uh, I'm really starting to like those. Uh, both my GoPro Hero 9 and um, the things I read about the Insta, the, both the Go, the 360 cameras and the Insta Go 360, is that the sound out of the camera is pretty good. Um, but 
I'm starting to more increasingly like to use the external microphone. Uh, it gives me some benefits in that today's like a windy day and I think it definitely does a little better in the wind when I use the external mic uh, in focusing my voice. I also uh, am hoping to do more interviews on the trail and I've got two mics and it, it allows me to do that and get a little better sound. So I, I want the ability to use an external microphone. Um, the, the third, when I decided not to go against things that would raise my um, creative abilities necessarily, give me the different types of shots, I started looking at ways to increase my uh, usability. There's a few things about the GoPro Hero 9 that have caused some issues. It's, it's basically been a really good camera, but when you go to the thing, sometimes the, the screen is rather laggy and it, you have to hit it several times to get it to react on the, the buttons. Um, but, but I mean, to choose a setting, it's not really that bad, but it, it just is a little laggy. Uh, I understand when they went to the GP2 processor in the Hero 10, 11, and 12, it is a little faster, but it's still a little laggy. The other thing I've had with my GoPro is a lot of glitches where every fifth or sixth time I'm filming, all of a sudden it won't film. The camera will freeze up. And the only way to solve it is to uh, stop the camera, open it up, pull out the battery and put the battery back in and then restart it. Um, which isn't real horrible in these sort I mean, it's, it's still a little inconvenient, but it's not that horrible. The other thing I'm not real excited about is the uh, GoPro mounting system. It's, it's designed where you, it has the little feet where you're putting it, putting it on the uh, thing you want to use and you screw it in each time, which does take time. Uh, I was able to uh, help with that in that I bought a external magnet system from Ulanzi to where you, you could screw it into this and then you could pop it in and use it. And then I, I had another one on my tripod, so I was able to switch between the two. But where that became a problem was when I started wanting to use my external microphone still. Because in order to install an external microphone on the GoPros, and it's still a problem today, you had to use the media mod. Now the media mod you, is, is all right. You, you, uh, you open it up, you have to have your feet closed up and not, not attached to anything. So I couldn't have it attached to my little thing to clock to the uh, Ulanzi. I had to unscrew it, get it flat, You remove this, your door, which I'm having a little trouble. Okay, and then you slide in your media mod. And it mounts like so. And then you're able to take your uh, external microphone and you can plug it in to the back port slide the little receiver on here and plug it in there and then you can connect it up to my wireless mic. The problem came, I, I would then have to, if I wanted to use my Ulanzi mount, I would have to go back and open up the fingers, reattach it, by screwing it on. And then I would have quick release again to the stick or the uh, tripod. The problem came with every time I needed to replace the memory or uh, take out the battery to replace the battery or replace the battery because it glitched, which was about every fifth or sixth time I used it, the battery and the media and the media card are behind this end that doesn't open over here. 
So in order to do it, you had to take the media mod back off, which meant I had to come and unscrew my little Ulanzi mount, pull it off, flatten the thing, open the media mod, pull out the camera. Then I'd have access to pull out the battery, put the battery back in and then repeat the process. And I just found it very cumbersome out, out working to have to do that real often. Uh, and it, it happened more than I liked. So I was looking for solutions to just make my life easier. So I'm gonna go show the camera that I came up with. Uh, I ended up deciding to go that route to try to make life easier. And let me show that now. Okay guys, so when I made the decision that I wanted to try to make uh, my user experience a little better, uh, I first want to say uh, the GoPro has worked great for me. I don't really want to, I'm not one of the people that's going to say I will never go back to GoPro. I very well likely will use it again. Uh, I will still use my GoPro Hero 9 in some cases in my videos. In fact, I'm using it right now. But the camera that I ended up deciding to go to was the uh, DJI Osmo Action 4. And I did it for multiple reasons. Uh, now one disadvantage when you're switching camera systems is not all of my accessories for the GoPro work with the DJI so I needed some extra accessories so I ended up buying the Adventure Combo which made it to where bo both cameras cost $399 the Hero 12 or the Go DJI Action 4 but I spent $499 to get the Action Combo. What I got with the Action Combo was the camera and they also gave me a selfie stick which does have the advantage to, of uh, being able to make it invisible if I want to run it through their software, which is pretty cool. I haven't actually tried that yet, but uh, I will. Um, I'm actually really used to using a little Ulanzi stick, which is even a smaller form factor and can turn into a tripod. I'm continuing to use it quite a bit, but the cool thing about this one is it can be made invisible and it also extends a whole lot longer. So you're able to get the camera further away from you and make it a little bit more natural looking shot. So uh, this is a really nice selfie stick. It also came with uh, two mounts to, so I could mount it to multiple things as opposed to one. Uh, the great thing about the DJI also that makes it easier is their mounting system. It uses magnets, which actually I'm sure isn't quite as secure as just using the fingers on the GoPro but it, it feels pretty great to me. Uh, you just are able to click in, you go. Then you press on the little buttons and pull part, and you're able to go mount it to another, another location. It's awesome and very easy. Kind of the advantages that I had with the, uh, using the external Ulanzi mount for GoPro, but it comes with the Action 4. The other great thing is the Action 4 uh, when you turn it on, I was talking about there's some lag on the screen on the GoPro. You're able to really navigate on this, on the DJI, and it is uh, like no lag and very easy to use. It's very quick. So uh, that's an advantage. Another added bonus that I didn't really think about is the touch screen on the front is also, I mean, it is a touch screen. On the GoPro, you can see your front screen, so you can see what you're framing if you're in like a selfie mode, but you can't actually use it. So I can be in a selfie sort of setting and I can come here and uh, change my settings from the front of the screen, which is, which is just a convenience. Uh, I would still prefer doing it on the back because you have a little more real estate. It's probably a little easier to hit all the options, but in a quick mode, it's, it's really nice to be able to change the settings from the front screen on the front. So that's one of the advantages that I see. Um, the, the third thing that came with the Adventure Combo was batteries. Um, with, when you buy the camera itself for $399, you get one battery. The advent, and and I've, I have accumulated several GoPro batteries. And one advantage to GoPro is uh, the batteries are like $25 each for their max batteries, um, their Enduro batteries. The uh, DJI batteries are more like $29, so they're slightly more expensive. And on GoPro, there's so many third-party accessories that you can often buy uh, third-party vendor's batteries and get them a little bit cheaper if you want to. Uh, that's not really the case with DJI batteries yet. 
So when I bought the Adventure Combo, I got this neat little charging case that'll charge three batteries at one time. It came with two extra batteries. So I'm able to fill this up and charge it. Uh, one of the advantages to DJI is the this charger is quick speed. So you can put a battery in there and within 20 minutes, it's 80% charged as opposed to, I think most GoPro batteries take a couple hours to charge. Um, so it's a much quicker charging. Um, I'm not gonna do tests on here, but there are tests on several other channels that show that the DJI batteries last a little longer. They're less likely to, uh, your camera's less likely to overheat and the batteries last longer, so that's an advantage. Um, one of the things that I found just as a benefit for me is I was using this little stick with my running pack and I was able to fit the camera in here, but always with the selfie stick sticking out. Uh, the form factor is just a little bit smaller on the DJI, and I can actually now slide it. All, it's easier to get in and out. And I can actually slide the whole camera with the selfie stick in there, and it fits. Uh, I couldn't do that with the GoPro because it's just the form factor is just a little bit larger. So I'm finding that cool. Now, when I talk about the external mics, that's that's one of the really big, big advantages to me. Uh, whereas the GoPro, you have to use the media mod, which costs an extra $80 to use it. I already owned it, so it wasn't that big a deal. This, you don't. It's got, when you pop open the side, you have a USB port. So as long as you have an external mic that can use a USB port, it works. Um, and I find it very cool and then I'm able to plug it in and uh, it, it just goes. Uh, I ended up buying, the, the camera came with an extra little case that you can pop the camera in there real easily and it allows the camera to be mounted uh, horizontally or vertically real quickly, but it doesn't have a cold shoe mount. I wanted a cold shoe mount so I can put the uh, receiver for my external microphone on it. So I did spend some extra money. I bought this small rig brand external case. It allows me to still use my DJ mount uh, and I can do it vertically or horizontally. I pop in the camera, it's very easy to do. Close it up. I've got the hot, the cold shoe mount at the top that allows you to slide stuff onto here. It's far enough away from the button so it doesn't cause a problem. And the cool thing about this too, where I, I was showing where I had to remove the, the uh, media mod to, to re get to the battery or the, um, the battery or the media card, this one, I can pop it open and then I have access to my door. I'm able to open the door and I can get to my battery or my media, my SD card without any issue and replace them without taking off the case. I don't have to go unscrew this. I don't have to dismount it. Uh, I can get to everything. Uh, so it's just a, a lot more convenience, uh, makes the workflow easier. With that said, uh, when you go from the, from the GoPro to the Action 4, you do lose a little resolution. You go from 5.3 as a maximum resolution to 4K. Um, I really don't notice it, and I think 4K is plenty good for my videos. I also, when I watched a lot of the side-by-side -side videos on different internet people, you'll see that the color out of the, straight out of the camera is a little bit more vibrant, I think, out of the GoPro. In some cases, I prefer it. But when I'm not using them side by side and I look at it, the image quality coming out of the Action 4 is great to me. Uh, and I don't notice, don't have any deficit with it. I think it looks good on my videos. Um, so, and, and I'm able to still have removable memory. Uh, it just works, works easily for me. Uh, and it's also definitely easier to deal with the uh, mounting and dismounting to use different uh, like my tripod or my, if I want to use a different action, a different selfie stick or uh, any of that, it's really easy to use. Um, anyway, so those are really my primary reasons for switching. 
Um, I will look at GoPro again in the future. I don't have anything against them, but I am really enjoying, enjoying the DJI Osmo Action 4. Uh, the, the majority of the videos you've seen from me in the last couple weeks, I've been using the Osmo Action 4. Um, I think it works great. I will say I do think the stability in the uh, GoPro is probably just very slightly better, but they're both very good. Uh, I can still run and stay fairly stable. Uh, I don't really have a problem. There might be a few extra shooting modes in the GoPro as well, but they're, they're pretty much things I don't use or don't use very often. And I have been uh, thoroughly satisfied with the DJI Action 4. Anyway, I just wanted to share uh, the information of why I switched and what I went to. Uh, if you found the video interesting, please consider hitting the thumbs up, the like button. If you're interested in any more of my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And other than that, I hope you're having a wonderful day and keep moving.